It's the plane that keeps the other planes flying. The KC-135 Stratotanker. Its twin is the old 707, but this one can carry five semi-tankers worth of fuel. We climbed on board for a ride. Before takeoff checklist is complete. Strapped in for takeoff. KC-135 heavy, runway 25 right. We roll down the runway. Soon we're at 21,000 feet flying over Douglas on the southern Arizona border where we will soon hook up with a gaggle of thirsty F-16s from Luke Air Force Base off our right wing. The KC-135 is a remarkable airplane. It's been flying since the 50s and will continue to fly for decades to come. Think of it as a gas station in the sky, refueling everything that flies, keeping those planes in the air. And it takes a skilled team to keep this plane flying. It's just like an old car. You know, there's not a whole lot of 57 Chevys riding around on the road, you know. Some of these aircraft are older than my father is, and I love the fact that this aircraft's been flying since the Eisenhower era. So it's something I'm very proud to be working on. The result, a carefully choreographed sky dance. How many we got coming up with? There's two right now, and then uh, they're going to have a third in about 15 minutes. As the F-16 approaches, the boom operator lying on his stomach in the rear of the plane extends the 27-foot boom. This is what it looks like up close, the width of a fire hose. As the F-16 pilot gets to within 10 feet of the boom, the boom operator with his head steadied on a chin rest gingerly works the controls to make the connection. Conference contact. Loud and clear. Loud and clear as well. How are you doing today? Pretty good, how are you doing? Not bad, it's my second time doing this, so I'll figure it out. Ah, no worries, looks good. This requires incredible teamwork from the pilots up front. All floating, 2K coming our way. To keep the KC-135 steady while the boom operator and the F-16 pilot finesse the connection. Not too far back, come down just a little bit, right there. Veteran boom operator, Master Sergeant Vince Jones explains. You give them that stable platform, like I said, constant airspeed, constant altitude. We're not porpoising up and down and they're coming in at a constant airspeed with a constant closure rate that's not too fast, not too slow, which allows us to then zoom in on our target for the boom. The KC-135 can offload more fuel in eight minutes than a gas station can pump in 24 hours. And it all happens as the pilot of the F-16 is a mere 20 feet below us. You feel that you could almost reach out and touch him. He's that close. A lot of skill, uh, really good depth perception, hand-eye coordination, um, really good teamwork between the tanker pilot and the receiver pilot and the boom operator. Sure, 2K, offload complete, offload complete. Tank full, he breaks off and gives us a thumbs up. And another F-16 slides into position. They make it look simple, they make it look easy, but in reality, it's not. Wow, <laughs> that is unbelievable. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, no good. I found that out in the simulator. I smashed a cockpit window of an A-10 on my first try. Eventually I got the hang of it, but it is tricky. Back in the air, another successful refueling. Air-to-air -air refueling dates back to the 1920s, but wasn't widely used until the Korean War and Vietnam conflict. This technology allows our military planes to stay aloft as long as necessary to carry out the mission. Many of the fighters out there have a limited range and our ability to aerial refuel turns these from a local force into a force that can be used internationally and worldwide. The 161st refueling wing quietly carrying out this vital mission every day as it has now for more than 50 years.